Good morning. I was Rick Mendenhall all with 10K Tackle. We got my pro staff, my friends here. We're going to work on installing a 57 inch force trolling motor on our boat. So this is Travis, the guy that knows. And we have a lovely wife, Carol, here. And we have Katie right here. Carol, <laughs> Carol's here. There's Katie's reverse first camera in there. There we go. And now you got a picture of Aneshka. That's all right. right. The main camera. Anyway, that's uh, right. We're going to unbox the motor first. She talks about this motor. So this is a 57 inch uh, Garmin force trolling motor. This has 100 pounds of thrust. It's rated for fresh and salt water. And you can use 4 and 36 volts on it depending on your setup and your boat. Um, this is one of the ones that works with all the Garmin integrated systems. So if you have Garmin Autopilot, Garmin <coughs> LiveScope, it will work with all of those different components which is what Rick and Carol have set up on their boat. So that's why we decided to go with this particular motor and it will fit pretty well on the front of this boat since their bow isn't too high and the 57 inch should be just about fine on that. This motor has features such as um, autopilot and spot lock, which comes in very handy when you've got windy conditions, you're trying to stay in one spot to jig. The silent aspect of this electric motor allows you to be able to kind of troll and sneak up on fish without having to use the gas motors, whether it be the kicker or the main motor, which in certain conditions can really benefit you on being able to sneak up on those fish and really attract those bites. This one, I imagine on your boat, will probably be able to get up to about three and a half, four miles an hour on a calm day. Like you said, the best part is the integration. We have Garmin Autopilot. We have two different Garmin displays, 106 Ultras on our boat. We have uh, the Panoptic system, all of that on the boat. So it's they all seamlessly integrate to each other. It comes with a, a wireless foot pedal, I believe, and also comes with a wireless uh, remote control, kind of just like our autopilot system, like the Reactor 40. You can point, push, stop, do everything right from just your hands. So you can be standing anywhere in the boat, just like our other autopilot system, and move it around. All right, so we're gonna open this box here and see what else we got in here, maybe. So, here's a template for, oh yeah, this is our, the mounting plate here. Yep. Mounting plate, all the parts we're gonna be using that the actual motor mounts to. So this is gonna take, this is gonna be our first step, just getting it lined up on the plat, uh, front platform of the boat. <coughs> Gotta drill some holes and then get it all fixed on and then the motor goes on secondarily to this mounting plate. Yeah. Other parts are going to go to this whole system and get it, get it ready to start using. And on this table over here, we have some different stuff. The other things we need to make the system work. We have some self-heated, let's get my head phosphate batteries with three of them. We want to self-heat it because self-heating batteries will actually have little warming pads on the sides of the panels that will warm them above 32 and allow them to function at much lower temperatures than they would otherwise. So this keeps it safe, especially when fishing pyramid or shaver in the winter. These will be able to be able to operate at a more optimal temperature and also be able to be recharged at temperatures where normally the batteries, a lot of these have controller systems that will shut themselves off and not them allow them to be charged below 32, but these can actually operate probably down to about, I'd say 20 with the little heating pads that they have on there. So that gives them a much wider range of operation. And the rest of the stuff we have here on the table. So we have a couple different things here. Uh, with all these trolling motors, you need an automated breaker. This is a 60 amp breaker, so if you get an electrical overload, it'll kick off and then it'll reset as it cools down, so you don't have to replace a fuse. We have a 70 amp uh, Marine Co. trolling motor plug. This one's rated for 70 amp, which most of the draw will be uh, between 40 and 60 at higher speeds, down around 20 at the, the lower speeds. But you need, for 24 and 36 volt trolling motors, you got to use the 70 amp Marine Co. The 40 amp ones that they sell that are the three prong that you twist, a lot of people make that mistake. If you're using the 40 amp one, they can actually catch on fire and you will be in really bad shape. So always make sure you use the appropriate plug with these more powerful trolling motors. We have some six gauge wire because you're running 36 volt and 60 amps, so you need at least uh, four or six gauge. We have a Connectees battery harness system, which is actually, I use this on my boat. It's very convenient. It allows you to plug in all three of the batteries in parallel, which allows them to run 36 volt and take it on and off really easily and kind of integrate this up to your whole system in case you need to move things around. And finally, we have the NOCO charger. This is a 10 amp by a three-way charger. This goes to each, to each individual battery in this system and it allows it to um, charge really rapidly because lithium-ion batteries can charge faster than normal batteries. And at, at the end of the day, since these batteries won't be hooked to the alternator in the boat, you need to charge them up at the end of the day. So when you get back on, on land, you plug it in, and by the morning they're ready to go. 
and it keeps them nice and maintained. It makes sure that nothing bad happens to them because it's uh, regulated. This particular one is rated for lead acid, AGM, and lithium, and has repair functions and stuff like that. So Noco makes excellent products for anything battery related. So, and then the final part is this Victron Smart Shunt. This is something that I decided to put on my boat and suggested for them as well. This goes on the, the negative line of the battery. And what it does, it's rated for 500 amps. It continuously monitors the amperage use of the battery system. So since you have these three batteries, each are rated for 100 amp hours, you program in here that you have 100 amp hours at a 36 volt system. It watches the amp draw and then it continuously updates you how many amps you've used and how much time you have left at whatever trolling speed you're going. It comes in very handy, especially if you're using this as a backup motor system to, you know, if your main motor goes out and you need to troll back to shore, you can know how long that you can go on or troll at a certain speed to keep you safe. I find this, it's not particularly expensive, but it's a very helpful tool. So with all these different things, you're able to get your system set up and we'll be working on that today. Yep, so we're gonna get started. I'll have the template on the boat and figure out how and where we're gonna mount things. So we'll be right back with you. Okay. So we unboxed the entire unit here. Got the, the mounting bracket here. Yep. And then the main unit here. We have the wireless foot pedal, which allows you to do all the functions that the remote control can. You can do spot lock, you can do autopilot, control different speeds. Um, and then you also have your remote control, your Garmin integrated remote, which allows you to do the same stuff. So say if you're trolling and working from the back of the boat, you're going to be want to use it. Most likely use the remote. If you're working on the front of the boat, say you're doing some uh, casting or jigging, that's where the foot pedal really come in handy. Um, you have a Weebus two-bladed prop, which allows you to get through anything that you're pretty much going to run into. And then this, um, we have the main head unit here, and usually in the head units is where the GPS is. So all of these new trolling motors are GPS guided, um, and they will allow you to be able to record different routes that you've taken or stay on the spot lock for a particular spot. Usually they stay within five feet of whatever location that you tell it to uh, spot lock to. Yeah. And it's, it's integrated right into my rest of my GPS uh, unit, all the rest of the units on my boat too. So we go from the main screen, I'm sure we can access this and do what we need to do from that. The rest of the mounting stuff's in here, in this box, and the manuals. So we figured out three or four hours or <laughs> more to get this started. So get this started. So we're gonna start figuring, we're gonna start drilling holes and get before it gets too late. Yeah. Okay, the first conundrum we have here already is that our, our uh, anchor mount. The Garmin motor has such a long mounting footprint that we do need to take off this uh, crater, crater. So we have to take this off first so that we can get enough room to get that the mounting bracket on for the motor itself. So this boat actually has quite a bit of room up front. It's just this particular trolling motor has a really long footprint. Yep. So that is That's a good foot. That's a question. All right, so we're gonna do that next and we'll get back to you. Okay, so we've already had already marked how the plate's gonna fit on the boat. We took off this big piece of metal that was used to hold our anchor line from the buoy anchor. And we've outlined the base already. We've got the unit sitting on it. We wanna show that the unit is still gonna clear uh, back by the window here. So very large unit, it's gonna be coming back and forth, back and forth. But we have just enough room for clearance here that we shouldn't have anything impeding it. So we come back and sit right next to this rail and then it'll clear this windshield wiper and you want it to be able to be out of the way of the deck as much as possible for safety reasons. And then also close to this rail, you can secure it on while you're driving to keep it from vibrating and causing any potential damage. So this way you have the most utilized space and also the most open space if you want to come up here and fish off this front platform or move around or do anything else that you need to do. So right now, now that we have these all lined up, these are actually coming two pieces. So we're going to take this uh, upper part off with the main shaft, and then we're going to drill down and mount this on, and then we'll reattach it over. Yep. So Go. taking off the, the, the mount in the front here that was for the anchor, that's some holes. We need a little bit of silicone before we get going to make sure there's no so water leakage going out of there. And you can see our outline that we're going to be using where we're going to be mounting the motor plate here. Ideally, this would be better done with uh, 3M 4000 or 4200, but today we are using silicone, which will work good for a few years. But if you're going to do this for the long term, you definitely want to use a more powerful marine adhesive. Um, but at some point, we'll probably take this off and then um, reseal them up anyways. So it will be totally fine with the silicone today. 
So adding this tape on top allows for us to be able to work on the surface while the silicone is curing. If you had it open, you could put the silicone on and just let it dry naturally, and then it'll toughen up in about half an hour to an hour. But since we're working on it actively now, this just adds a little extra barrier, so it doesn't make a mess. It saves us time. We've laid it all out here. We've already marked all the holes where we're going to be drilling our holes after we punch them to make sure that it's going to be mounted correctly. That's the next thing. So we're going to punch it and drill it. Center punched the holes, got them all drilled here. And yeah, there's our outline. Manual called for 5 16th holes, but they seemed a little big. As you can see, so we stepped down a quarter inch. Maybe we'll have to bump it up a little bit, but we're just going to give this a try because less play would be better if uh, you know, you're know you underway or towing and you don't want it to vibrate. Yeah, we want to move it around. <laughs> yeah, tie it down and loosen up. So. <laughs> so we're getting ready to put this on, and there's two things I want to point out right now that'll be really helpful. The way this motor actually sits on this front bow is actually slightly elevated. As you can see here, there's a bit of a gap. So what I'm going to do is put a few stainless steel washers underneath just to kind of help level it out so it's not flexing. Also, for the instructions, before you bolt it down, you have to put this safety retainer strap on there, which secures it while you're in transit. You need to put that on before you bolt it down. Also, on Rick's boat here, um, this front platform actually drains straight out. It doesn't go into the boat. So we don't actually have to seal this motor up as you would on a normal fiberglass boat or a boat that has a front bow compartment that drains into the bilge. So this one actually makes it considerably easier. So what we're gonna do, we have these big stainless steel fender washers that are gonna go underneath along with another washer to keep the nut from slipping through like that. And this will give us, um, since we don't have a backing plate, this is gonna act as a larger surface area so that it doesn't put extra pressure on the front aluminum bow of this boat. And then on top, we're just going to put a washer on the inside as a little added security and then put in our M20 bolts here. And that is how we're going to secure this down. So we'll come back after we get this bolted down. So we've got the main plate mounted here. We had to actually put a retaining pin in to mount the motor head up here at front. Now we're going to mount it's a little steer control arm here. That would have it right here pretty soon next. And we'll get back to you when we get on to something else. So the second attachment after the first retainer pin is the upper retainer pin. This one doesn't actually screw in. It has some grooves that holds it in place. This one is what keeps the motor kind of straight up and down. And then it does have these little retainer screws that go in here and keep it in place. So that is what holds the upper part of the motor straight vertical when you have it deployed. And then when you go to stow it, it pivots right on this part and then slides back. So once this is hard mounted, with the brackets here, we're going to go ahead and run this cable up under the gunnel here. And there's a spot right here. We can run right up under the dash, and we're going to run it back to a battery box in the back here. Awesome. Okay. Once we had this all mounted, we had to reach under here. We've got the cable that connects the head unit to the to the mounting unit right up under here. It's kind of hard to get to, but there's enough space to get your hand in here. You take it in here, and you just twist it around, tighten it up. It lines right up. It'll slip right in, and just tighten up the around the nut there. And you're good to go. Next thing we're going to do is put on the handle. And that's secure the bottom ram underneath there. So, okay. So the instructions say to measure if um, this cable isn't already marked 16 inches from where it comes out of the servo housing up the cable because you're going to need to mount it later. So this is eight and eight. So that's 16 right there. And the mounting position is going to be. And then you route this cable through the starboard or right side of the motor housing. You can mount the cable holders on this side, and you're gonna mount some on this side too to keep the cable from moving around. And we're gonna run this all the way underneath this gunnel here, attach some more power cables, and pull it underneath the dash over here on this side of the boat. So we end up securing the power and the cylinder cable here along the side through this port, and the last thing we did was install. This little two little bolts here, the lower steering arm, so it holds this thing, help it go up and down a lot easier. So it can articulate up and down much quicker. And when the next thing we do is the prop, and that might be close to the main installation before we start talking about power, batteries, and all that kind of stuff next. So this part of the installation is done. We got the prop installed with about six to ten pounds of pressure on it, and hopefully this should easily come up and down. So we'll see. Oh, yeah. There it is. It slick, easily. slick, slick. Well, about the ground. Bring it up a little bit because we're touching the ground down there. 
One and a half and have this pop up. Locks right in. That concludes this video. We're gonna do another whole video on how to run the power on this thing, so you can check out how we're gonna set up with the the batteries and all the accoutrements go between here and there. Thank you for watching. Thank our friend here, Travis, for always helping. Thanks, Travis. No Woohoo! And the ladies back there doing their job, petting the cat. All right. Until next time, we'll be back to see you on the water.